Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. So as you can see by the title, in today's video I'm going to be talking about how to vlog and giving you my tips and tricks to creating a good vlog on YouTube nowadays. So just a bit of my story, I started vlogging about two years ago now and in doing so I've been asked a lot of questions regarding vlogging and how to make good vlogs. Now I'm not saying that I make the most fantastic and best vlogs in the world, not at all, but I do know something about it and I'm just going to be sharing my experience with you today. So the first time I came across the concept of vlogging, I stumbled upon Ben Brown and I did this through Instagram. So for those of you that have been following me for a while now, you would know that my journey into social media and content creation started through Instagram and photography. And from there, I started following some of the bigger accounts on Instagram and obviously Mr. Ben Brown was one of those accounts. And at the bottom of his description, I saw a little YouTube link. So I was like, let me see what this is. Clicked on it and that opened up a whole new world to me. I was immediately thrown into the YouTube world and just inspired by all this amazing content, all these amazing videos by these epic content creators just traveling the world and it was just so inspiring to me and that is how I learned about vlogging. Now I watched YouTube for about six months, seven months before I actually picked up a camera and started taking videos. At this point I was still just taking photos only but watching people on YouTube and one day I just thought to myself I was like these guys are traveling the world making videos of their lives. Why can't I do this? I can do exactly the same thing. So on that day I decided to pick up my camera and make the first video on my channel called Origin which is still up there and I've come a long way since then, but it was really cool and that was the start. Now obviously when it comes to the essentials of making a vlog, you are going to need a good camera, you're going to need a microphone, you're going to need an epic laptop to edit all your videos, you're going to need lighting from all over the show, you're just going to need all the gear in the world. You're going to need drones, you're going to need stabilizers, right? Wrong. You don't need any of that stuff. I bet most of you probably have this in your pocket right now. This right here in my hand is a 1080p camera as well as a 240 frame 720p camera which is probably better than most professional cameras out there. So for those of you that have this in your pocket right now, which I know probably 99% of you do watching this video right now, you have no excuse if you want to start vlogging and you say you don't have a camera. Take this out, just shoot your life, shoot the things that's happening around you and use this as a tool to get started and practice composition and different filming techniques. I mean, the basics of this is the basics that you would take over to your main camera anyway. So I started making videos on my old Nikon D5000 which I borrowed from my grandpa that didn't have any autofocus, any HD video or anything, but I did it, I tried. And then eventually I upgraded to the Canon 70D which I'm currently using at the moment. Um, and that is an awesome camera as well. And then I've also been sent recently the Canon 77D to test out and review. And that is what I'm filming this on right now. This is probably better than the 70D in my opinion. So yeah, this is a nice intermediate camera that you can get started as a DSLR. Use it for photos and videos as well as more high production stuff. But I mean, you can just use, like I said, your phone. You can use a simple point and shoot as many YouTubers with millions of followers do. But I had opted to go for the Canon 70D, probably my main inspiration was that was because of Casey Neistat and it's turned out well for me like I said you can use it for photo and video but the camera really doesn't matter to start off with I think story is so much more important than getting amazing shots obviously that is beautiful and that's what everybody wants to see but if you can capture an amazing story people really don't care about the camera and I mean this if we just look at photography for an example we've seen some of the most amazing work produced on old disposable cameras or Polaroid cameras not the Canon 1DX's of the world where they get the most amazing sharp quality images but it's of some pebbles on the beach no it's, it's about the story that you capture so just think about it in that way it's not about the gear um, but if you keep on doing it and you really are passionate about it I think that you will eventually have enough money you can save up and upgrade and just up your production value of your content. Now, that's another thing going on to saving up for that. If you start out with the high quality, the best camera, then what if you don't like it? What if you don't like vlogging? What if you've tried it for two weeks and you're like, no, this is not for me. Then you've spent all that money and now what are you gonna do? So yeah, I would say start off cheap um, and see how you like it. Try vlogging in public because that's always a challenge. 
Um, but I mean, you don't have to do it in public as well. You can do it wherever you want to. That's the great thing about the blog is it's so creative and so free to do whatever you want. And that is one of the reasons why I love it so much. Okay, so getting on to actual gear. Like I said, I use the 70D or the 77D at the moment. I'm using a VideoMic Go, which is a great microphone for a starter. Um, there is the VideoMic Pro as well, which is a bit more expensive. And then you can also get lapel mics if you're doing more sit down stuff like this. I don't have one. Um, but obviously if we're gonna be vlogging, you're gonna be on the go, you can't really use a lapel mic. So get yourself a Rode Video Mic Go or Video Mic Pro, depending on how much budget you have, and that should be good either way. When it comes to lenses, I am using the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8. Now this is probably one of the best investments that I've ever made. It's just perfect for everything that I do. Uh, the landscape shots, the portrait shots in terms of photography, but also this kind of stuff. Just the autofocus on this lens is amazing. The video quality is amazing. The zoom lens for me is just perfect and you get that low aperture as well. So when you're filming videos, you can do stuff like this where it'll focus in on your hand and the background is blurry, take it away and it focuses back on you straight away. So great lens, I highly suggest that. And I'll put links in the description to all the gear that I use as well. Um, but if you're just starting out as well, you can use the 18 to 55 kit lens, that works perfectly fine. I did that for a long time. So again, it's really about the story you tell and not necessarily the gear that you have. Just some other stuff, depending on what kind of videos you're filming, if you're gonna be doing high action stuff or water stuff, obviously you're gonna to wanna to invest in a GoPro or some kind of action cam. And then obviously drones would be really sick. I don't have a drone yet, but I'm still saving up for it. Drones just make everything better. So <laughs> if you wanna throw a drone into the mix, just go for it. It'll, I promise you it'll make your videos look cooler. But then again, keep, keep the story going. And then for lap Laptops and editing, I currently have the MacBook 2016, uh, the 15 inch one, and it took like two years to save up for this thing, but it's so worth it, and it's definitely made my life a lot easier when it comes to editing. So like I said, for like two, three years, I was editing on an old Samsung laptop that took me like eight hours to render a video. So I used to wake up early in the morning and go to my art department at like five o'clock in the morning and go edit videos. But that's what it took to get to where I am today. So just start out with what you have and make the most of what you have. Don't complain because there's people that don't have what you have. I mean, you watching this video right now on your computer, on your phone, on your iPad, whatever it is, you're already one step ahead of that kid that doesn't have anything. So when it comes to editing, I edit all my videos on Adobe Premiere Pro and I'll probably be doing an editing tutorial on Premiere Pro pretty soon. Um, but when it comes to editing and vlogging, obviously people are getting shorter and shorter attention spans and we've seen this through Facebook videos. You have those five second videos, but the text on the top, text on the bottom and people watch that. I think people are watching less and less long form content that's boring, less and less documentaries, that kind of stuff. People are reading less, so it's becoming a lot more of a visual world and high impact, high pace, high energy is what keeps people's attention. That's why I see people like Logan Paul and Jake Paul and Rice Gum, people like that, that keep the attention of their viewers. PewDiePie as well. They have so many cuts in their videos that it keeps the attention and people don't get bored of watching it. But if you're gonna have something that's long and drawn out, people aren't gonna watch it unless they're interested in the information that you're giving them, like this video right here. So I'm not doing all the fancy cuts, but I'm giving you good, valuable information. But if you're doing it for entertainment, you gotta keep the speed up. You gotta keep it nice and fast paced so that you don't lose the attention on your viewer. So how I keep the attention of the viewer in my vlogs is that I'll throw in cinematic sequences every 40 seconds to a minute and this just keeps people wanting more and looking forward to the next cinematic sequence as well because I know that in my videos that is one of the things that people like the most and the reason why they watch me. So it's always good to give them that but then also make them wait for more if that makes sense and go on to the story again. Like I said the story is very important so you can't just make, if you make a whole video full of cinematics, yes it's going to be cool but it's got no storyline to it nobody knows what's happening so i think it's important to have those gaps in between and just the breathers to let people get to grips with your life again and what's happening in the situation around you and then throw them into the next cinematic scene so to stop people from getting bored in between the cinematic sequences i try to keep the talking bits as short as I can, keep the B-roll footage as quick and snappy as I can. That's why you see in my edits I do a lot of like fast paced cuts um, up until my talking points. I also like to speed up clips. So if, for example, if I'm driving, I'll just speed it up into one short thing. And you can see that I'm still driving so it doesn't just skip to 
I'm at my house to I'm at the beach. Uh, I just take that driving club, speed it up, and you get that point of reference to see how I got there. Okay, but back to the visual aspects of the blog and how to make it interesting and visually appealing. Um, like I said, I throw a lot of cinematic sequences in there, so even if you're just talking and you throw some really cool B-roll stuff over the screen like I'm doing right now, um, it'll just keep the interest of the viewer from seeing one face all the time. Um, I mean, I'm, like, I know I've done this this whole video, but this is a different kind of video. So when I'm out vlogging um, on the go, doing my missions in public, where wherever I may be. But yeah, to make it visually beautiful, I think try and capture lights in a really unique and interesting way and capture people as well. I think people play a massive role in storytelling, um, especially like in my case, I go to a lot of uh, nature and landscape areas and just to have a person in the landscape really puts it into perspective of how vast that landscape is and tells you the story of that person in the landscape. So I think try and follow people around and see what they have to think about the whole situation. And then going on from that and into editing and how you tell that story and compose that story, I think it's important to get a lot of different kind of shot angles. So try and focus on getting nice like wide angles far out shots of the entire landscape or person but then also don't forget to zoom into the closer details of the scene so that you just create a nice contrast between the further back shots and the nice close-up detail i think that just keeps it nice and interesting and then what you can also do in editing obviously there's color grading and this plays a big part in making it look really nice um, so I use a plugin called Film Converts. I also use a plugin called Magic Bullet Looks, and this lets you apply certain styles, uh, filters, and LUTs to your videos. And basically, what a LUT is is a lookup table, and this is kind of like a preset on Lightroom. So there's also a plugin that I use on Lightroom where you can save Lightroom presets as a LUT, and this applies it to your videos in Premiere Pro. Um, I'll link all the stuff in the description as well, so you can just go check that out. I think that I will make separate videos on that as well so stay tuned for that but yeah color grading I try not to overdo it especially with video uh, because it's moving it can get a bit much when you over edit the colors of the video so just be careful with that I would say try and keep it semi-natural like you don't have to be too careful with it because it is cinematics but yeah again it's 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 art so it's really up to you and what kind of look you want to get in your videos so just the second last thing i have is music and music can just influence your audience in a way that they won't even recognize it music has the power to change your mood so much and just throwing in the right music on top of your footage can make such a big difference to the way people perceive your footage and in saying music as well i also mean like sound effects and that sound effects play a massive role just sound in general is so important to making videos and something that people often forget about so just keep that in mind choose some good music uh, try not to get copyrighted on YouTube um, but there are great free stock music sites out there so in saying that music is much like the color grading it's all up to your style your choice what kind of videos you're making so I can't really tell you what music to use. I think just go out there, test different things and see what works for you. I think that's just the general theme of vlogging. Like it's all a massive experiment. No one really like taught me how to do it. I just did it and see what works and made up some kind of template formula thing that I think looks good. So yeah, it's, it's a really personal process. I think vlogging and you just, you just have to do it. You just have to make it happen and see what happens when you do certain things, try different buttons, try different presets, try different music, try different styles, look at different people, just try everything and see what works best for you. And then just lastly, one of the questions that I've been asked is, what do you think makes a successful vlog? And I heard this one quote from a content creator and he said that the main goals of YouTube videos is to entertain, inspire, escape, and to teach. So I think if you can achieve any one of those in your audience and evoke a response that benefits any one of those four things, then I think that you've done a good job. Um, but in saying that as well, if you've managed to tell a good story in your vlogs, then I think that is most important. So yeah, that is going to end today's video. Yeah, like I said, this was much more of a conceptual type video than a proper technical video about vlogging. Um, I probably will make one of these in the future, maybe a part two, so stay tuned for that. I'm gonna call this one part one actually. Stay tuned for that and yeah, if you have any questions about vlogging, just please let me know down in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer everything. All the links for all the gear and all the programs and everything will be down below, so check that out. 
And yeah, that is all I have for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please leave a like. I wish all of you that are going into vlogging and trying to start the best of luck. It's such a fun experience and you get to know yourself so much better. I mean, just for myself, I've grown so much in confidence since I have started YouTube. So I think it can be a really positive thing. So yeah, good luck to all of you guys. If you are new around here, hit the subscribe button for new tutorials and new weekend venture vlogs every single week. In the meantime, stay weird, don't die, and I'll see you guys in the next one.